Hello everyone, this is Dinsdale1978 from Team MP. I'm going to bring you a commentary tonight from Battlefield Bad Company 2. Uh, it's a game I really love to play, and I, I haven't played enough of lately, come to think of it. I've been playing way too many other games, including Black Ops, and I think it's just time that I got back to what I really love to play. So, I've teamed up tonight with a couple of other MP members, namely beans 2 Niner, Mecha Tool, and Beano. Um, and Bino was one of the first MPs, I believe, to get level 50. He's a beast on the battlefield. So I gave him lots of props here. Uh, we might have had a few other MPs on the other you know, on our squad mates here uh, in blue, but I can't recall who was still left. A lot of people were leaving. It was getting late in the night. But I'd asked him early on in the match, what should I should use? And he said, 870 combat. And I said, okay, I, I'm game for that. Go hobo with a shotgun. And I saw these guys running up here in a group. I got a little excited, and they were lining up for me. Uh, like it was a uh, school photo or something. I don't know what was going on there. And I took them out three at a time. I wish that every game was like that, but uh, few and far between sometimes those multi kills. Just running through them. And I have to say, if I see a red barrel, I'm going to shoot it. I, I can't resist. I love shooting the explosive barrels in here. My teammates probably think I'm crazy. I'm probably letting away my position, but whatever. Um, here, the, the team took Bravo pretty quick. They holed up in the second floor, and there's little I could do. Didn't have a sh uh, grenade ready. Knew there was one by the door. Hopefully, I'd shield myself. But they were just chucking grenades down there. And I figured we were going to lose B. And B is pretty easy to lose. Actually, A and B in this first set here are pretty easy no matter what because both buildings are destructible. When a building's destructible here, your MCOM is gone. And that's pretty much the way you can run attacking on these as well. Just run grenade launcher, rocket launcher, C4, whatever you're going to do, and just plant it all around the buildings. So I decided to try and hole up here. Maybe we catch them. Uh, but I didn't think we were going to get that lucky. Um, and end up with a shotgun getting a few good long distance kills. I mean, the range in this is crazy. The range with the shotguns in Battlefield by Company 2 is just crazy. Uh, and I love it for that because I can get these kind of sniper shots um, pretty easily. But uh, really what I really talk about tonight was the difference between when I feel people's comments on Battlefield compared to Battle Warfare. What Call of Duty uh, would be, and, and a lot of people say, well, it just takes too long to get to the objective, the action isn't fast-paced enough, it's it's not, uh, the frame rate isn't fast enough, um, there's no kill streaks, blah, 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 well, you know, that's, that's all fine and true, and they are two different games, I don't want to compare them as, as being apples to apples, this is apples to oranges, as it should be, um, this is not the same kind of game, but there's something I really like about Battlefield, um, as you can see, me and the squad, we're talking a lot. You're going to see the little, the little uh, audio uh, indicators light up there. Let's get myself some tags. Mm. But uh, you really have to communicate. And in Black Ops and Call of Duty, communication was often not something done in public matches as well. I mean, you, you get together with a bunch of people, 6v6, six, six six, and maybe they have mics and PlayStation 3 especially, and maybe they're actually going to talk. But in Battlefield, once you talk... They succeed. I mean, we are always calling out people. We're calling out what we need. If we need an assault to drop some ammo, if we need a medic to heal us up, if we need a recon to throw some of the sensor indicators out there, motion sensors out, we're going to do that. We're going to change our class. We're going to move in and we're going to help the team out. And that's really essential. And I don't know what the people are talking about being not being fast paced, but if you don't sit behind a wall somewhere and camp yourself, you're going to find action no matter where you go in Battlefield. I'm going to push, you know, I, I like to push the, their spawn, uh, get right up and put a front line up. And here I was going to take this building down because I said, you know what, if you guys are going to sit back here and set a spawn point for yourselves and you know, this building, do some crossfire on us, I'm going to take this thing down. But I didn't have quite enough C4. So, I decided to go in for a second run. This is always dangerous because they know I'm coming because I've, I've tried to put C4 on here. And the C4 fails to stick. Wonderful. So I go up. I know I saw a guy coming in. He gets a couple shots on me. I blow it, hope to catch him. Barely get him. And get a lucky shotgun kill. But, what can I say? The shotgun is wonderful in this game. If you haven't had a chance to play this game, play with a shotgun, I suggest you rent it or go out and buy it. It's fairly cheap now. And go run shotguns for a while. It's, they're a little less... Um, easy to use, I should say, in Call of Duty for the most part. But the rewards are so much greater. I mean, look at some of these shots I'm getting here. Hit markers, but still, 
I'm just taking shots and, and, and getting hits from far, far away. And you're not going to get that many kind of Call of Duty game. But regardless, we were running here uh, trying to keep them pushed up. Because if you can keep the enemy away from the end car, they're going to have a hard time setting it. But the difficulty in this map, like I said, is the destructible building. And sooner or later, they're going to grab us here. Uh, so anyhow, I may pose something to you, uh, community, as well. I mean, I... I know I, I've mentioned before that I'm a parent gamer and uh, married to a lovely wife and uh, sometimes there's some friction about gaming and uh, I don't know if any other parent gamers or married gamers in general or even with girlfriends or boyfriends, shall I say, um, can weigh in on what they feel are healthy limits for gaming, um, what some concessions you've made to have some gaming time, uh, ways you've gotten around that sort of argument that it's an addiction. Uh, I, I don't feel in any way that I'm addicted to gaming because there's many times where I would say I don't want to play tonight. I, I'm going to go do this. I know this is more important. I'm not going to um, gaming because I know my life, I need balance. And uh, I, I would rather have balance in my life and a happy marriage than game, 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 game. I'm going to try and be in game battles and have everything crumble around me. You know, being a father really puts those things in perspective. That there are more, things more important than picking up a controller every night. Um, and the only reason I bring this up is because my wife and I were having a conversation about this one night. And, you know, she has different hobbies than I do, for the most part. And uh, I was trying to discuss her why the, I felt this to me was more of a, a hobby like a sport would be. Less, less exercise, of course. Um, than say just watching a movie oh there, there's more interaction here. there's a community there's friends that I have online there's there's a, it exercises your mind more in my opinion than a movie would uh, maybe not as much as a book I always say I don't say that just because I'm a librarian but uh, that, because I, I think some books can be rather engaging the way you read them and, and what types of story they can be but there's something about gaming to me that just makes my creative juices start to flow um, after I get done playing I start thinking of you know what was visually impactful about the, the, the thing I just the game I just played and what really made me wonder about the story or the character design or whatever um, because it's such a piece of art you know, at this point the games are no longer just a couple of pixels on the screen shooting each other you know or you know a couple of blocks bouncing a ball back and forth like Pong games have become this entity that are just amazing to me um, there, there are little movies. I mean, this battle could be featured in any major motion motion picture as a climactic point in a, in a movie. And you're playing it for two, three hours a night sometimes. I mean, people play it for much longer than that, but you know, I, I put a limit on some gaming. Um, but I've kind of got off topic here for what I really was intending to talk about, but when you start looking at what game, modern games are, especially the multiplayer aspect of it, um, there's the challenge of, uh, oh, and this guy got turned on, by the way, I just wanted to mention that, he, he thought he was going to hide in the bushes and sneak up on me, and I may or may not have been letting him taste a part of my body that, you know, I don't often show off in the battlefield, but hey, um, <laughs> this Wookiee's got to learn not to hide in the bushes, that's all i got to say. And, uh, anyhow, gaming, they are becoming more like movies. Uh, games are becoming more like uh, mini theatrical events rather than just a simple online sporting kind of idea and I really started to get upset when I hear people talking about games as nothing more than child's play you know mature games are something, nothing new now and uh, I think that as we see the ability to create more realistic games and more in depth immersive games um, the, the, the line between what is entertainment, uh, you know, sort of childlike entertainment, and what is um, artistic entertainment is going to be blurred. And I'm all for that. I, I wish I had a degree in game design or was able to do some more with game design because, you know, I, I, I just I have a degree in painting actually and art history, but. Uh, if I had something to help me make games, I'd be just so happy because I feel like that's where a lot of my uh, thoughts go to in more days and, and how I can make a better game, how I can change a game, uh, what aspects can be changed to be more realistic. Um, like in this, I always thought, you know, it, it just seems odd that they're running around with their hands tied to their guns, basically. And I think in Battlefield 3, they're going to be a little more realistic in the way they run, but they always seem kind of robotic. Like they run, jump, with their you know, one hand guiding the gun, ready to shoot. And 
I just don't believe soldiers are all doing that. They're going to lose their balance, you know. I can't believe I failed here, by the way. I thought I had perfect shots, but I think there was an invisible wall on this rock, and I didn't get any of those shots. I got one. But, uh, still pretty fun. Uh, so, anyhow. Uh, as I was saying, the game becoming more realistic. Um, and, and there's another big thing that's going to affect gaming, I think, recently, and I hate to blend two topics together, but this is going to be a long video. Um, recently, they're trying to pass a bill that would make uh, sharing videos of copyright protection a, a felony crime, and a lot of people are saying that video games are going to be the first affected, YouTube videos especially are going to be affected by this, and I, I feel that the, the companies haven't weighed in on this very strongly yet, because imagine Activision and EA... And Naughty Dog, as well as another one I can think of, and Bungie, you know, these different, uh, and Microsoft, obviously, and they're putting these features in a game that, um, a theater mode, where you can create your own videos and export them to YouTube. Now, to me, it seems like the legislators behind the times, they're, they're actually talking about the wrong thing, and this goes back to the same kind of argument we see with copyright. Um, being a librarian, I know a little bit about copyright and the history of copyright and scholarly communication as well, and... You know, the, the whole concept of copyright, as it started, was meant to protect the intellectual property of the author at first, but it was really about making sure that the people in the kingdoms were, were getting, you know, in the countries were getting the proper version of the books they were getting. Um, and the, the, the original copy was protected. And it became less and less about the author, and less about the attention of, of the author, as time went on, and laws were changed, and, and policies were set, and that's one of the big failings right now is that we, we're making copyright um, more about the publisher and protecting these sort of uh, commercial rights of the publisher, because the author technically signs away most of their rights when they sign a publishing deal. Uh, especially in scholarly communication, there's a big push now in scholarly communication to to stop signing away your rights, make things open access so everybody can share them. And that goes along with what I'm saying with YouTube, is that we almost have this open access sort of feeling where you're able to use derivative works. You're able to go and use this Battlefield Bad Company 2 video. Do something upon it. Don't just sit there and post it and say, this is a game I made, because that's obviously not true. This is a game I participated in, made by EA and DICE that I played, I created this gameplay with all the other people involved, and now I'm adding commentary to it, maybe I'll add music to it, whatever I do is a new work, it's a derivative work from this original video I captured, and I had the rights to capture it, um, now I'm not just displaying the video, um, much like a movie would be, or the NFL or something like that, uh, I'm changing it, I, I may have to edit it down, I may add something to it, I may put transitions in, or highlights, or give tips, and all those different ways, in my opinion, change that original intent. Because you're not entertaining by playing, you're entertaining by exhibiting. And in that regard, you should be able to stop uh, this sort of this concept of, of you're stealing somebody's work or you're trying to take you know advantage of somebody seeing the story. And that's why the law is just a little too vague. Because when it becomes uh, you're exhibiting a, a movie online by breaking up into five pieces and putting on YouTube. Yeah, that should be stopped. Okay, I, I'm sorry. I, I, you know, I know all about the freedom of information and, and wanting to share everything in the world. But if you're taking a movie that you don't have the rights to actually produce online like this, you don't have the rights to copy directly. Yes, you've changed it and cut it into bits and pieces, but you're not actually adding anything as an artistic bit of artistic value. You know, of creative value. All you're doing is allowing other people to view it when they should have had to um, view it online or, or pay for a ticket or pay for a video and by chopping up and putting up their free you may think you're helping to spread information and to share a creative work but what you're actually doing is, is you're shortchanging the original producers in the work and yeah you could say that's a big production company they don't mind a little bit of, of you know competition but you're not competing the idea of, of taking somebody's work and giving it away for free isn't competition. It isn't fair market value. And uh, I don't think that's what YouTube videos are doing for games. If anything, YouTube videos, save for maybe L.A. Noir, uh, what they were doing recently, 
are actually promoting these games. When you watch this, there might be people who might watch my video, and hopefully that you share this and some people do see this video and say, man, that looks like a heck of a lot of fun. And I would love to go and and uh, play this game. I really would love to play this game. And their EA gets a sale. Then, then there's a whole other argument of whether or not they buy it used or new. And well, that's a whole other issue. But uh, anyhow, I'm going to start end my commentary down here and run it run it through here. This is going to be the end of the match where I, I basically go and decide that I'm going to clear out their spawn because the game was about two, one to two tickets left, five tickets left, maybe. And if I can get a few more kills in their spawn, it's over. I'm, I'm tired. Uh, but anyhow, let me know what you think about this whole this whole uh, legislation legis legislative act that's going to be passing soon, or, or already has passed, I'm not sure offhand, that may limit our ability to create videos. If you like what you saw here, give me a like, share it with your friends, and uh, remember, Battlefield by Company 2 is a good game. If you haven't played it, go and get it already. Play the Vietnam 2, it's awesome. So, this is Dinsdale1978 from Team MP signing out. I'll see you on the battlefield.